recording of this. You hear that? Okay. Anyway, um, hello everybody. How are you? It is uh, it is Monday, and it is time once again for us to uh, go on the pop up show. And this week we have a special guest with us. If she can roll right in here, there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Guess guess who that is? Say hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. I'm you're... real. I'm not AI. <laughs> uh, you, you, she is real. She's not AI. <laughs> just make sure you're kind of in here. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to hit your knee. Here's your knee. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we'll talk about my knee in a second. Um, I uh, I I killed my knee mm -hmm. literally, mm -hmm. and not, and I didn't do it because you were coming here to visit. <laughs> You know, mind you, but I just it. Uh, <clears throat> boy, I feel like I have something in my throat today. So anyway, so how was your trip up from uh, Atlanta? It was great. Uh, I mean, y'all had much better weather than there's in Atlanta. I know that. Um, but yeah, just lots of fun. Just hung out with my daughter. Yeah. And did lots of shopping and lots of walking and just saw all the. Good stuff. So you got to see your daughter who's living up here. Now. Yes, she lives here. And she got a very nice apartment. She that, does. That amazes me. She does. Me. It, yeah. Do you know how hard it is to get a decent apartment this time? I didn't really know. I mean, I, I, she did, I think she did struggle a little bit. They got lucky. Of course, the job, as I've learned, is not getting the apartment. It's keeping the exactly. apartment. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. So we enjoyed the trip. You've had a good time. Mm -hmm. You've seen New York. Yeah. And now why don't we go and talk to some of these people out there? Let me see. Admit all. Okay. So hopefully we'll get more than these. We we have Marjorie. Oh, there she is. Okay. Uh, there's... Well, hi, Mandy. <laughs> yeah. There's Mandy. She gets to stay with us only for a half hour. Yeah. I I, I did a pretty move, good. Move in a little closer. I did back. a little. Pretty good planning, but I my flight's at seven, so I've got to, you know, I can't stay the whole time because I'm uh, have airline anxiety. <laughs> I have to get there very um, much ahead of time. Well, first of all, you want to make sure the uh, airline's still in business by exactly. the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello to Pauline. Hello there, Pauline. Hola. Da -da. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello to, uh, oh, hello to Mandy. Hi. I'm not working <laughs> on my computer. Uh, hello to Charlene. Hello. Yeah. And hello to Marjorie Miller. Hey, Marjorie. Or as we like to know of her these days, oh. Nurse Miller. Uh, and Marjorie's got to give me an update on the tennis match we were just watching. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, and uh, no, we can't. Uh, no descriptions of the uh, of the game are allowed. Okay. Without express written permission. Uh, that's true. Of the commissioner of tennis. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, hey, Brian. Guess who's here? <laughs> I just want to know: Is Don is Dan Giller in? Uh, sorry, Don Giller is he with? Uh, he no, Marjorie he said? he punked out on me. Oh, he wrote me, man. He wrote me night before last, and he said. I'm too afraid of COVID out there. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mandy. Hello. And there's, of course, uh, our good friend up in, uh, up in, uh, up in, up in, up in, uh, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll remember where you, Canada. And, it looks like uh, we're in a hotel. Visit, but he's not in Canada right now, are you? No, I am, uh, I am on location in, uh, okay. yeah, sunny Las Vegas. Yeah, there wow. Wow. There's Fremont Street, but that uh, long cylinder, cylindrical tube is Fremont Street right there. So yeah, and what are you doing in uh, in Vegas? Besides well, I've been thinking. About, I've been thinking about Rick a lot this last uh, 24 hours. I'm at the Cauliflower Alley Club. I don't know if you remember last year the pro wrestling thing that I'm a part of. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm interviewing a, a former WWF champion or WWE champion. And I've been thinking about Rick because there's a lot of old school wrestlers that are here at this convention. Who's, who's, who's there? All sorts of people. The one that the one that I really kind of thought about Rick with was Cowboy Bob Orton. I went and saw Cowboy Bob Orton this morning. I'm like, oh, that's right up Rick's alley right there. And uh, there's a whole bunch of old school uh, wrestlers that are here right now. And and the festivities are just beginning. Can so. you name a few of them? Because I may have interviewed a few of them in my time. 
Uh, did you ever interview any of the, uh, the, the, well, actually, yeah, they, they wrestled out of San Francisco. Did you ever wrestle any of the Samoans? Or interview I, any I never had the Samoans on, but. Uh, no? What's like name? Haku is what? here and some of the other Samoans. The Nasty Boys are here. Um, uh, uh, Coco Beware, he's the guy who had the, the parrot. He's here. Um, and, then, and then a bunch of newer guys, CM Punk. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people that are here. What are they like off stage? Um, every single one of them are a character as much as you would think. They're all completely unique. I've, I've met hundreds of wrestlers because I have a wrestling promotion up in Canada um, a, a, for, for charity. And every single wrestler that I've ever met is every bit a character unique to themselves. And um, while they share maybe athletic attributes and things like that, they are completely unique individuals. That's for sure. They're like cartoon characters come to life. Yeah. The Samoans <laughs> were, uh, what's his name? Uh, was Alpha what? and Sika. Huh? And then Peter, Peter <laughs> Maia was The Rock's grandfather. Well, The uh, Rock was yeah. in wrestling because he comes from wrestling royalty, which were the, the Samoans. Yeah. I chief Peter Maivia was the grandfather of, of them all and of a bunch of them. And yeah, there's probably 40 or 50 of them. Even to this day, if you're to watch the current World Wrestling Entertainment product, there's a guy by the name of Roman Reigns, who is the head of the entire company. And he is from that family as well. So they're like four or five generations now into this thing. Wow. We have Charlie's here. Hello, Charlie. Where are you? There you go. Uh, how are you doing, Charlie? Pretty good. Pretty good. And uh, uh, let can we? Can, I'm sorry. What? Can we point out his shirt? <laughs> Charlie's shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to agonize. I've never been this old before. <laughs> yeah, he, he's worn that one before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice shirt. Yeah, I like that. Hello, Frisco. How are you doing, Len? Good. Hi, Mandy. Who's the guy with you there? <laughs> Well, you see, I mean, uh, she's here with me now. She, you were with her a couple of weeks ago. She gets uh, around, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's been almost a couple of years. Now. It's been a couple yeah, of years? It's been it's been. 21. Yep. Really? Isn't that crazy? I know. Uh, the time goes by when you're not having any fun. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, yeah, Alex, Alex, can you move your camera to the right a little bit? You're, you're off center there. <laughs> to your right. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I've done this on purpose. <laughs> well, we only get her half an hour, then we have to look at you the other half hour. So. <laughs> anyway, no, um, 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 yeah, this kind of looks like Bob Barker and one of the Price is Right women. Uh, you know? uh, <laughs> oh, is there a joke about that? What? Bob Barker came as close as he could to a hundred without going over. Yes, I love it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Oh God, he was for ninety nine. Ninety nine, yep. Ninety nine. Wow. Yeah. Well, I uh, I got to tell you, I'm in great pain today uh, because oh Jeff, hi Jeff, I didn't see you, and of course I've got I can't can't forget uh, Edward Berger. That's right. We'll dedicate the second half of the show to Bob Barker. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, oh. You, can take, you can take a drink, too. Where, where, where are we? Here we are. <laughs> I love oh, really? Where, where did you yeah. get those things? Uh, I got them uh, when, on my trips to The Price is Right. Oh, I, really? I've taken several trips down there. Wow. Really? Yeah. Is that fun? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, oh, yeah. here's, a, here's a picture of me dressed as a big wheel. <laughs> yes, no, you'd be oh. all excited about that. Let's, okay. Let's make a deal. Yeah, I, I, I wore that to make it confuse everyone. Did you Ooh. ever did you ever appear on it? Uh, no, I, I, I did appear on the uh, st one of the stage shows of The Price is Right, but that's not on TV. It's just, uh, you know. So you were a big fan of The Price is Right. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I used to watch it a lot. I still uh -huh. watch it every now and then, but yeah. I always liked it with Bob Bark. Yeah. You know? Well, well, what can we do? Yeah. And of course, Jeff is here. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> he's driving too. Like he's, he's not driving. He's riding. Oh, he's riding. Driving. Uh, we can't he's hear you, Jeff. Can't. 
We can't hear you, Jeff. Jeff, we can't hear you. We can hear Jeff's wife. There's Jeff. Hello, Jeff's wife, Pamela. We How can't about... hear you. What? We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. This is. Uh, there we go. Oh, he's wow. going to reboot it. Yeah. Well, you uh, know, he just killed his mic, his camera. You know what happens yeah. sometimes? People use, uh, you use an uh, iPhone. Right? I use my phone, yes. And when you use that, it's a little harder to navigate. Yeah. And sometimes you'll accidentally get rid of your picture by accident. I, I've done that, yeah. yes. Yeah. So. But she doesn't have to have hers today because she's right here. It's the Mandy episode. <laughs> yeah, Brian called it the Mandy episode. Where did you guys go for lunch? Any place good? Yeah. Here. Oh. Uh, I, I, I didn't get around to my story. Oh, yeah. So the other day, I'm going to return something to Whole Foods so they can send it out to um, uh, uh, Amazon. Amazon. And uh, on the way there, uh, I take a fall. Ooh. And uh, I, um, uh, how, how bad? It was pretty bad. His uh, knee banged up. He, he, my, my leg banged up. It twisted sideways. I think I tore my meniscus again. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, oh. here, on this hand, it's still a little black and blue oh. there. And the whole backside of me is black and blue. What else is black and blue? Your oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Then I got a knee thing, but I can't show you. Uh, but how would you describe it, Mandy? It's <laughs> some gnarly scabs. <laughs> yeah, gnarly scabs. That's how I would describe it. <laughs> Big, giant scabs. But oh. it doesn't hurt. But the leg, I can't even walk well. Oh, no. And so I'm going to a doctor tomorrow uh, who will probably tell me, yeah, it's a torn meniscus, you know. Yikes. Yeah. So Marjorie treated me to a, a lovely sandwich and potato salad and wine. Yes, we ordered out to Zay Bars. And then oh, some cool. really good oh, rice pudding. Nice. Well, we figured we could take her up to the Harlem Tavern and get a hamburger. What's that? Or we could order out for Jew food from the Jew Tavern <laughs> to Zay Bars. So I had Jew food. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think, man? They want you to think of Zay Bars. No, she didn't go to Zay Bars. Oh, you didn't go. Oh, it just she didn't go. She just uh -huh. ate. We just got the food. Got the food. Yeah. That's and Marjorie put on her beautiful china and it was something. <laughs> Marjorie is always a great host. I might say that. Uh, Mandy, however, has not gotten to see our cat. She's in That's hiding. how he's calling it her, his cat. <laughs> Does it belong to somebody else? Yeah. Well, we have, we, we the, the friends have a cat. And I, I have a, uh, I think I put pictures of him up, her up from the last time she visited. And uh, uh, we take care of the cat. And uh, the cat is, can be a little shit sometimes. <laughs> As most cats are. Well, you know what she does? She, I've got, I, I, I did this fall, hurt my knee. I can't afford to fall again. And this cat is constantly trying to trip me. Under your feet, right? <laughs> Oh, that hole. You know, I'm going, are you trying to kill me, you little jerk, you, <laughs> you know? Um, and then the last night, she has never, she has never come on the bed before, really, to any appreciable extent. And she did last night. She finally jumped on the bed while we were asleep and kept jumping on the bed and kept jumping on the bed and walking around and over our heads and, a, you know. <laughs> Yeah. everything she could do to keep us awake all right so that was nice that was nice so it goes home tomorrow so i have a bad knee and it was a cat that's trying to kill me <laughs> and uh and a cat who uh you know she, she just has and right now she disappeared i know where she disappeared to but you, yeah, you know her hiding place. Yeah, I didn't want to wake her up and bring her out because then she'd have to see you and she'd go running again. Yeah, she would freak out. You know, the cleaning woman came the other day. We didn't see this cat for another five days. Yeah. <laughs> the cat, the cat's very good at hiding in places. 
you know? And, but I think I know where every hiding place is now. So I can look for her in those. So far. So far. But, you know, she'll find another place. She's good at it. She's really good at it. Plus, she sleeps during the day because that means she can keep us awake all night. Yep. Yep. <laughs> With her biscuit paws. Yeah, yeah biscuit paws. Yeah. <laughs> Does she do that, Marjorie? Yeah, all the time. That's mm. a, they get that from nursing. Yep. Yeah, that's how they get milk out of their mother. Is that very movement? Yep. Um, making biscuits, I think people call it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Eating bread, kneading bread. Kneading dough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, anyway, what? Whoa. <laughs> Somebody's computer made a noise. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm uh, at the death's door with this knee. <laughs> Going to, uh, going to the doctor. So the here doctor, we go. <laughs> what? I said, here we go. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, Marjorie was blowing her nose, so I figured she was going to say that anyway. <laughs> yes, she was. She yeah. would have. When I want pure pity, I nobody I go to more than Marjorie. <laughs> right, Marjorie? I'm not saying a thing. <laughs> I've, I've already told mom and dad to stop fighting a couple of times. So. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. We don't fight that. Much. No, you you were. I was just kidding. Yeah, this is normal. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so how how do you 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 told me you're very proud of uh, your hometown. Yes, because I'm even from Fulton County. So oh. like that's where I grew up. <laughs> so I'm I'm like loving this. Um, whole thing with the former guy and how we're going all out mug shots and everything yeah you, you, and thankfully i did not fly out on thursday considering he right. came into atlanta yeah. hartsfield on thursday i mean he was only there like an hour total but still it screwed every all the roads they had to stop all the delta flights going in they out. stopped everything yeah. yeah yeah anyway mm. i was glad about that but yeah mug shot yeah, I mean, he's making money off that mug shot, though. Yeah, so seven million dollars. And he seven, knew seven he million knew. dollars. Yeah. yeah. Really? And, and, and yes. Yeah. Yep. And growing shirts. <laughs> <that they, laughs> they never <laughs> surrender. Never surrender. But the guy that surrendered times. four times. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. Yeah, Charlie had was it Charlie? Were you the one that posted the the meme about that? Yeah, no, I posted. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you the one that posted the meme about with Jeff Foxworthy? Yes. I yeah. That. yeah. What was that? It was like you. It was kind of like along the lines of you know you're a redneck because it was Jeff Foxworthy, but it was like you know <laughs> something, something. You've never surrendered, but yet you surrendered four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they never surrender, and he did surrender four times. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. technically, that's surrendering. And growing, and counting. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that uh, Arizona is thinking of. Yep, that's Arizona. next. That's next. Wow, he's going to be in court a lot, isn't he? <laughs> the judge has ordered him to be in uh, in court on was it March sixth or something? The day before Super Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she said, "I want him here," and the and his lawyer said, "Yeah, but he." He's got a uh, he's got a uh, uh, campaign he's running, and that's just before Super Tuesday. And she said, "If a guy came to me and said, listen, I can't go on trial because I've got to work that day,' yeah, I yeah. would tell him, I'm sorry, you got to be here, right? And so I'm not going to treat him any differently than I would treat that person. I love you know, that. That's above the law, just like he said. Yeah, he's yeah. Had to come out of his mouth before, so yeah." Good for him. Yeah. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> but yes, I'm proud of Georgia and Fulton County. You the, guys really did. You you yeah. came in over the top. How how is the how do people feel about this down there though? Um, there's obviously pockets of people that I even personally know that, you know, think it's a crock of doo-doo that he's being, you know, just those Trumpers. But for the most part, I think there's a big majority of people that are happy about it. 
Right. Yeah, they're they're not upset by it. They yeah, don't, they don't want to go ahead and, and uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, he won. I mean, Biden won Georgia, so Georgia's turning purple. It's purple. It's kind of going towards being blue. So maybe. Yeah. One day. Well, one can hope. Good. Good. Yeah. It's yeah. nice to hear, Mandy. Yeah. Because you know the stereotype is that it's that that it's just along racial lines. So you know that that's good to hear. No. Yeah. It's it's a lot better. <laughs> people. A lot of people have come out of. Well, I, I keep calling it the fever dream. Like the people that voted for him in 16, there's so many people I know that no way they would never vote for him. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they see that if nothing more, he's going to be stuck in a lot of litigation. Oh, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, when's he going to have time to be president? <laughs> I, guess, I guess he'll be serving in the Oval Cell. <laughs> like they're having to rearrange yeah. all these court dates now because there are so many of them they're going to butt into each other. He wasn't president when he was president. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. We don't get political on this program, but gosh, yeah. you know, <laughs> this is historic, they say. Yeah. How are you people looking at it up in Canada? Well, uh, that that uh, bug shot certainly has made the rounds, and I, oh, I hate to say it like this. There's a lot of people who are just laughing at what's going on down there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I don't yeah. say that impolitely or anything like that. It's just it seems like it's kind of circusy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so yeah. Now, how do you people in Nevada feel about this? Oh, the people in Nevada are so excited that I've seen shirts all over the place already on the strip. You seen what? Uh, nothing, nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think he said shirts on the strip or something. So shirts on the strip. You can see on the shirts on the strip already. Yeah. Yeah, with oh. the much. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Wow. They're all over Texas. <laughs> yeah. Really? Really? Uh. 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 Mm. All right. <laughs> I brought a prop today for today's show, mm -hmm. and uh, our, our our hotel that I'm staying. No, you you just froze. Out of I thought I bought a donut because I thought if there wasn't anything, if there was anything that encompassed Las Vegas, it was this donut oh, right here. So oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> God. Fruit Loops. Those are Fruit Loops, my friend. Oh, wow. yeah. So there it's it a is. Fruit, a Fruit so Loops donut. And the Fruit Loops are what on top of the. And They're donut. on top yeah. of uh, yeah. which is on top of a long john. So yes, yikes! But right there. If that doesn't encompass Las Vegas, I don't. Do know you really want to eat that? <laughs> no, I <laughs> bought it as a prop for the show here today. I saw it. and I thought, oh, there we go. Now I can show everyone in Las Vegas because I don't think I don't know if this thing would exist anywhere else other than Las Vegas. Um, That's for uh, sure. That's like breakfast for kids, right? In Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Brian, you didn't bring us anything, did you? <laughs> what? You didn't bring us anything, did you? Uh, Any I show and tell? Cabbage. Ca cabbage. <laughs> the complete Anti opposite. donut for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what? That's a cabbage? Yeah, steamed cabbage chopped up so I could eat while I'm driving instead of uh, Taco Bell or wait, wait, Jack in the Box. For you... Traveling food is steamed cabbage. <laughs> it's better than Taco Bell, right? Then what other options? Yes. No, usually, yeah. usually I cut up vegetables like bell pepper or something and eat that on the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So that's I'm just good. I'm He's just so coming healthy. home. I know. What do you expect yeah. to do? Live forever? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying. At least the insides of my body are healthy. <laughs> yeah. So I just uh, got home from Lodi, so I gotta pick up Adrian in a little bit, but but I'm to gonna go up the stairs, so. What? I think I need to call my Uber. You need to call your Uber? Uber? Um, I have to go say bye to Marjorie. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. It's on the, so I'm gonna go hug Marjorie, so I'll, I'll pop in again, but I'll- You'll just... probably pop in on that to camera, actually. Bye. Oh, thank you. Bye. 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 Really bye. Appreciate it. I love it. I love seeing. If you're in New York, come visit Alex. He's great. Yeah. You know, what, what other show does the host invite you to his home? Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and next time you're in New York, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it again. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay. I'm going to come back soon, okay. hopefully, like in the next six months, hopefully. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mandy. Hey, I'm going to go say bye to Marjorie. Okay, go say goodbye and get on her camera. Hello. <laughs> get on her camera just so they can see. <clears throat> okay, here I go. Oops, excuse me, folks. I got to move. And uh, the leg. Oh, I. Oi. Oi. Oi, the leg. Uh, let me see here. Let oh, me, it's a blue sky. Let me do this. What? It's beautiful here in California today. Yeah, look at that sky behind Brian. Yeah. He drove right by my house this summer. He still never stopped by. <laughs> I know. I, I, one day, one day, I'll I'll just be knocking at the door. Don't worry. <laughs> Make sure you bring cabbage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe some carrots. I'll surprise you with that. There you go. I don't know. If I was going to eat uh, 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 a vegetable, I don't think it would be a cabbage. No. Oh, I love cabbage. I love cabbage. Really? Steamed cabbage is very healthy for you. Well, I'm sure it is, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm, in fact, Marjorie and I were talking about this the other day, but I prefer fruits to vegetables. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. fruit. I, I could eat fruit all day. Don't serve that's, me anything else but fruit, and I'll eat it. Is that? Oh, look at that! That's your car. That, yeah, that's my mm -hmm. 1934 Cadillac I'm building. Oh, right now. fantastic! That's it's wonderful. Cool. Yeah. And, and is it, it? Is it? Does it run? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It drives. Yeah. It, just people give me high, uh, people give a lot me, of fabrication to it. People give me the yeah. OK sign as you drive by. Yeah, <laughs> my, my other toy. Yeah. Wow. Wait a second. Is that your okay sign, Alex? Yeah. Is it the index finger? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Index finger. Yeah. Usually. Oh, okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Which finger is it supposed to be? The index yeah. finger, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, that's your, that's your pinky. It might be a gang sign. You better be careful with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's like that. No. Oh. No. <laughs> First finger. I mean, really? It's that finger? It is. I mean, yeah. hi, baby. Oh, Dad, we, got, you we got get it. this one here. Uh oh, hey, don't scratch me. Don't oh. freak out. Oh, my God. He's freaking oh. out. <laughs> Armin. This show is off the rails. Right? <laughs> oh. Well, he's running away. Yeah. Oh boy. That cat, cat had other cats, things. Cats aren't like dogs. Dogs mm -hmm. will come in and jump on you and lick you and everything. But usually this lake hasn't hurt me when I've been sitting, but it's hurting me now when I'm sitting. It's amazing. Uh, and then I try, try, and they say you use ice on it. Yeah. And ice doesn't seem to work. Is it swollen? Wow. Uh, is it swollen? Yeah. Not particularly. A little warm. But not not swollen. Right. But is it torn? I think it's a torn meniscus. I, I tore my meniscus once before, mm. and I think what I did here when I twisted my leg is I tore the meniscus again. Mm. This time it's really bad. What do you do for that? What? How do you heal that? Uh, I, surgery. Oh no, that surgery. They could do surgery, but they usually don't. They try and get it to. Fix itself. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, look uh, at that. Kitty. Mm, that mm. looks like a kitty who doesn't want to be on TV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> and I'm feeling hoarse today. So, did you get her out the door, Marjorie? Yep. Boy, am I <laughs> glad she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> what a pain in the ass. <laughs> Nice visit. She is great. She She's is a great lady. Great. She's a great yeah. lady. What did she get to see? What did she get to see in New York? Well, she was with her daughter, so they went all over. Yeah. She posted nice. a bunch of pictures on her Facebook. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Her daughter got a job and is living in New York now. Yeah. Did she nice. go to the 9 11 museum? Do you know? I have no idea. No, they went I, don't think so. I don't think she got to a lot of stuff to see a lot of stuff. She yeah. basically was just eating and drinking with her daughter. You know? That was the most amazing. Did, <laughs> drinking you, mostly, she said. Yeah. 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 Have you guys been to the 9 11 Museum? I would, yeah. We were yeah. there when it first opened. Well, no, um, no, we, we, we didn't go to the 9 11 Museum, did we? Yes, we did. We went to the 9 11 site. 
right? Yeah. And then we went back when the museum opened up. Oh, really? Did we? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was I was with you that first time uh, on the outside with the with the fountain and everything. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was just the most uh, amazing thing I've ever seen. Did, were you saying something, uh, Edward? Uh, no. Oh, Glenn. There was, uh, there Glenn. was something. No, there Glenn. Was... Glenn. I, just, I just said that's the most amazing thing I've seen. That the nine eleven museum is, is you can't get through without crying. It's it's yeah. just absolutely horrible. Why would I want to go there? <laughs> I know. <You're> there. <laughs> My wife and I were weeping the whole way through there. I mean, it just, uh, you know, having lived through that, it was just very touching. Were you here at the time? No. No, I wasn't either. My, my wife. I do, I, do, I do remember how I found out about it, though. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I had to go to work that morning at, uh, at CNET. Mm. And I get a call before I usually get up and I go, who the fuck is calling me this time in the morning? <laughs> it was Shecky. Oh, yeah. wow. And he said to me, turn on your TV, sir. Mm. I said, what's this about? I, turn on, I figured Dave, Dave's done something or whatever. <laughs> I turned on my TV set and I said, is that the World Trade Center? He says, yeah. Uh, a plane just flew into it. I went, that's not an accident, is it? Mm. I don't think so. And then the second one flew into it while we were talking. And I said, well, I guess this is terrorists. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's how I found out about it. Hmm. I think a lot of people on the West Coast found out about it. There's so many people who have stories of being on the West Coast, 5 a.m., yeah. getting a call saying, turn on, your, turn on CNN or turn on your TV right now. Yeah. That was how I found out, too. I had a friend in Pittsburgh who did the same thing. Well, you know what's interesting, and I've always said this about that. If there was ever a building that was hated more, it was the World Trade Center. Interesting. They used to call it the boxes the computers came in. <laughs> uh, it was an ugly building, and people hated it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, it gets smushed to the ground like that. And it's, oh, we missed the World Trade Center. Oh, the World Trade Center was so... No, it wasn't. We hated the World Trade Center. I didn't hate it. And you came out of the subway and you saw the World Trade Center and you knew which way was south, which way was yeah. north. Yeah, I can buy you a compass. Yeah. You know? That was my compass. Yeah, well, I, 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 it, it, yeah. Was, it was not a too, a too well-liked building. Am I right, Lynn? Yeah, I have a picture. I took this when they were just built. Yeah. My dad drove me up to the site. I went up there, took this picture. I was about 14 or something like that. And if you think about it, it's really not a very terrific building. I mean, the ones they've replaced it with are much better. It's beautiful, yeah. The new one they replaced it with is gorgeous. Yeah. But again, it's another case of them putting a... Uh, a wood, a chip on your uh, on your shoulder, and saying, "I dare you to knock it off." I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the other thing I worry about. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be working in that building. Yeah, and you're. It's amazing how small those buildings were in footprint. Mm -hmm. and you go down there and you see the footprint because that's what's being memorialized there. Mm -hmm. It's nope. not that big. Nope. It's not that big as a footprint. Nope. So, whatever, you know. You're talking uh, about the, the fountains that are there? Yeah. Yeah. Are those, that's not actual yeah. size. Oh, those, yeah. Those are the footprints oh, of the buildings. The mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. There are two of them. There are two of them there. Yeah. yeah no, no, and that's the footprint of the buildings. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. there are a lot of people who went, how can you build something back over this? You know, this is hallowed ground. I don't know if it's hallowed ground exactly. You know, it's tragedy ground. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a bunch of things like that. But it was... Still feel the, huh? You still feel the energy there. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. when you go there, like, as a, as, a, as a visitor to New York, and you go down to those fountains, there's a weight that is there. It's, a, it's, it's, it's invisible, but you, there's a feeling that is there for sure. Yeah, I agree. Will it be there 
50 years from now. Not, mm -hmm. the next gener not the generation that didn't live through it. No, it'll it'll fade. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, Pearl Harbor's still there. Yeah, it is, but... Pearl Harbor's still there, but does it have the same energy it had when it happened? It's a symbolism. It's a symbol of freedom. <laughs> well, there, yeah, for sure. It's a symbol that makes sure that we're still putting. How no, many it's billions? it's what it is. It's a symbol that somebody hates us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they hate us for our freedom, right? Yeah. They hate us for our, they're jealous of our freedom. Yeah. Uh, it, it, what did you think when you saw it, uh, Paula? I was very moved. I, well, I, I had, I, I mean, um, my, I had memories of um, eating at that wonderful, um, what was it, Windows of the World, that, that restaurant at the top of the, the old yeah. tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, to me, it was uh, all, all the memories, like all the memories that I have of New York are, are really meaningful and, and happy memories. And that, that was a, I didn't, I remember I, I didn't want to go. And, and Marjorie said, let, let, uh, let, let's, let's go. And I, uh, I stopped at the, at the museum. I didn't want to go, go through that, but I was really glad that we, remember we took a walk along that wharf. It was, it was a lovely day and it yeah. was, it felt important to do. And it was, it was a great day. I yeah. think every American should have the chance to go there. I really do. Absolutely. Yeah, in the in the same way as uh like the 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 uh, Vietnam War Memorial was important. Yeah. You know, the experiencing it. Yeah. The Harbor Memorial in Honolulu is very touching. You know, so but it's, is it touching because it happened in our time? Oh, well, yeah. so, you know, I mean if we had a kid, it's like 25 now. Yeah. Would it be touching to them? Yes. Okay, so I have it's a little bit uh, similar in the sense that there was a tragedy that happened in a, in a little town called Hope, British Columbia. Hope is actually where um, First Blood was shot. Mm. Uh, along one of the highways that goes in between throughout the province, it goes through one of the mountain passes. In 1965, there was a gigantic rock slide. Like it's called the Hope Slide. And now there's sort of a memorial there. The highway had to be built around it and whatnot. The cars that were... Mm. Uh, that were, 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 were engorged in rocks and whatnot are still under there because it's just the tonnage this year. It's a mountain that's sitting there now. My wife and I went there three weeks ago. We were driving through and I said, hey, let's go see the Hope Slide. Mm -hmm. I was born in 76. This thing happened in the 60s. And as we approached and saw all of this rubble that was still there, this big pile of rubble, we were both overcome with this not like the 9-11 fountains, but, but like a similar energy, like a weight, a weighted energy was hitting us. Hmm. And the thought that I have is, okay, is this because we know what happened here? And because we know what happened here, our brain is releasing chemicals that create this weight, or is there actual, you know, cosmic, like, is there energy in a place like that? Uh, but that hope slide, I was not born when that happened, yet I still felt it a few weeks ago when I was there, so. Well, no. you're a very sensitive person, you know. No, I'm serious about that. You're very, you're a very sensitive person, and so that would, you know, that would affect you, you know. Yeah, good for and you. Wait. Good, good for you. But you know, we're not living in an age where kids particularly live in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't. to do with what, what do you say? What, what Brian? Uh, my godfather's house in Tahoe Donner uh -huh. backed up. You know, there's a bunch of homes, a lot, a lot of area there, but it was one of the homes that the backyard went out to where the Donner Pass was. Mm -hmm. So they won't build on that area because of that. And it's, it's just weird. It, when you have the house, when I'd go up there, it'd be weird to look back out there because you know what happened there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, I, when I went over the Donner Pass, I, I met up with these people and I said, uh, hey, I wouldn't eat that. <laughs> Good, Alex. Donner, party of four. Uh, party of four. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, I, I I try to think about things that would would affect me like that. Nine eleven wouldn't affect me that hard. Because I wasn't here, at least in New York. I mean, to New Yorkers, it has a very visceral feeling about it. Yeah, sure. Plus. Uh, Plus, um, downtown was closed off from 14th Street to below. You couldn't get through there. Yeah. It was closed off for months. Okay. Yeah. 
But what I'm saying is, is that I, uh, you know, I lived on the West Coast. So the effect upon me wasn't like the effect was upon somebody who lived on 14th Street. Right. You know, and, well, it, had, um, it had a big effect on Philadelphians. I mean, you know, because we're close, we're, you know, what, yeah. 90 miles away. Yeah. I mean, it's not that it didn't affect me. It's just that it didn't affect me as much as it would affect somebody who, for instance, sat here <laughs> in New York City and there was smoke in the air. Right. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you'll never forget that. Yeah. You know, uh, where you're going nodding your head. Uh, Mike, is there a reason for that? Or? No, you'd never forget that. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I could not ignore. I mean, I know how much it affects me thinking back to that day, thinking back to the first time when I saw the rubble. It, like in 04. Well, we were, we're we're going to remember your smoke from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't know, feel that way about Loma Prieta, though, right? I mean, you were there for that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. You know, I mean, you were there, you felt it. Yeah, you know? but I was, I was mentioning to Mandy because we were talking about, you know, things that you did in your past a long time ago. Like I lived in Houston for two years. And when I look back on it, I can't even believe I did that, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and when it comes to any of these things, I kind of go, wow, did that really happen? You know? Uh, so uh, it's, it's, um, it's not a question of not caring. It's a question of, it, I kind of move on, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I think we took care of that area downtown. I think we rebuilt, it's all there, a whole new, in fact, it's very modern down there. It's much more modern than it ever was before 9-11. And uh, we've been down there recently and it's a train station. Wow. Yeah. Just knock your socks off. Have you guys ever taken the boat cruise around, around Manhattan? I yeah. I, I, when I left Stephen Laurie's the last time I was out there and I knew I needed to get downtown, that's where my hotel was. It was down near Greenwich. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, well, if you want to take a, you know, jump on this boat, it was like a dollar 35. They they call it a water taxi, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes yeah. three steps along the way and then stops down there in that, right down there is where you're talking. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's a beautiful area. But taking that, oh, what a, what a great way to get around Manhattan. Well, I went on something. It was something out of a party or something. I can't remember now where I got on the boat and we actually went out to the Statue of Liberty. Cool. And we did that, around. Marjorie. We, we, we did that. We went to uh, Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty and, uh, Liberty. and, Go and Governor's Island, which is gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, get a vis I get a kind of visceral feeling at Ellis Island. Mm. Yeah. You know, because I know that I've gone online to the Ellis Island archives and I found my uh, uh, father's name and my grandmother's name in there because they oh, came wow. through Ellis Island. They had somebody waiting for them, his, his father actually in California. They came around the other way. Hmm. Uh, but I, when hmm. I saw those names in there, I went, oh, you know, it, it had an effect on me. But, uh, you know, kids today don't really care. Come on. No. Nope. You know, you think 9-11, oh, my God, 9-11 is horrible. And then you look back and that, how many years ago was that? 23, 22 years ago? 22 years ago. 22 years yeah. ago. Kid who's uh, 22 right now wasn't even uh, sentient when that happened. Yeah. So uh, do you expect him to care about it? Not in this day and age, when people don't well, care about it, anything. It's a thing in history. Yeah. Like the, the kids that are in college now don't have any any memory of it mm -hmm. at all. So I yeah, mean, it's, it's, it's not in their memory, but they they learn they can learn about. It. Yeah, but people, kids today they don't. Care I don't about, know about kids today. They don't I mean, care that's, about that's history before. Rush. They don't care about history before they were born. <laughs> you know, and that's a terrible thing because I. I always loved hearing about and knowing about things that went on before I was born. Yeah, but, but you're generalizing, mm -hmm. Alex. What? You're generalizing. Not all kids are like that. I think they're they don't care really. Most of them don't, most of them don't know who the Beatles were, or if they know, <laughs> they can't name them. <laughs> yeah, they don't care about what you care about. They don't. That's true. You know, that's uh, we don't care about what they care about. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But they, they, they know what they care about. What, what do you say, Brian? They know the Ninja Turtle names. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. They do, yeah. Thank God. Um, I, Raphael, I, I, Raphael. Michelangelo, Raphael. Donatello. Raphael. Oh, Donatello. 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 There's still one that I haven't heard. So who's the leader? Um, Raphael. Uh, yeah. Ken. Ken. <laughs> okay, so I've heard, <laughs> I've heard Raph, Raphael. I've heard Michelangelo. I've heard Donatello. Who's the fourth one? Michelangelo. No. No, that was the third. Donatello. Leonardo is the leader. Donatello? Leonardo yeah. is the leader. Oh, Leonardo. Leonardo. Oh, yeah. Leonardo. Yeah. Of course I should have known that. You didn't need to know, know what. what Come on. <laughs> I, feel good about that. I feel like that would have been Shecky doing, correcting yeah. the fourth one. Do you think that. he would have known all the, uh, do you think he cared yeah. about the Ninja Turtles? I, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised to get a copy of Ninja Turtles number one in his, in his vast collection somewhere. Because yeah. Ninja Turtles one came out in 86, 87. It was black and white, very serious comic. It would not surprise me at all if he had a copy of that. Hmm. And it's worth a lot of money. I don't know. I never went through his comic book collection. Yeah. Oh, you know, the only thing I have is his video collection. So, yeah. But anyway, so get those kids yeah. today. Hi, Jolly. That's right. I mean, do you find that as old grandma, yeah, you talk to your grandkids, you have to explain things like the Beatles to them? And well, my grandkids are too little. They're only two and four. But my kids, they my youngest one is 28, and she knows who the Beatles are. Okay, okay. She's yeah. within that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, I know as a kid, most kids, when I was growing up as a kid, they didn't know from these things. You know, they, they didn't mean it, it didn't mean anything to them. Does that make well, sense? Yeah, but okay, so I've got a lot of like 19, 20 year olds in my life, like nieces and nephews and whatnot. And yeah. the thing about them is that their world that they were born into was so much bigger. Like when you were born, there were three networks. You could catch up on everything. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. We weren't that retarded. There were actually five networks. There were, were there no, five? There were four there networks. Five? Four networks. Four. PBS. P P PBS. Oh, PBS. PBS. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, then they added a fifth, which was Fox. Yeah. They were born post internet. These ones that are 20 are both born post internet, where the world is so big and there's so much that you could never kind of. Get it all, and so you're only getting what you got. Where other ones are getting different things. So the ones who are born after the internet is like that. It's a total generation gap. Like I'm so grateful to know what the world was like before the internet, versus you know, like before the internet, there were only five, four channels. Yeah, and there was nothing to watch. It was occasionally a YouTube okay. channel. Now there are literally thousands. Of channels, and it's twenty four hours. And there's still nothing still to nothing. watch. <laughs> and it's twenty four hours. Remember, we'd have the, the sign off of the American flag and them doing it. At and the, oh, the American flag, flag, but then the jets, the jets <laughs> going. And the uh, that, uh, that, here's what happened though. They they got so used to signing off that way that when finally they did start going to like five in the morning or something like that. They would sign off for three minutes. <laughs> but they would run the whole thing and then sign off for three minutes and then come right back. Can I tell a Letterman story? The what? Can I, can I tell a Letterman story? A Letterman story? Go ahead. He started working for a TV station in Indianapolis, and I think it was while he was in college. And uh, he was the guy at the end of the night, him and two other guys or whatever were the guys that signed the station off. And it signed off with a picture of the TV station. And then the Star Spangled Banner was playing or whatever it was. And uh, they rigged it up one night where, it, I mean, it was crude by today's standards, but uh, they signed it off for the night. And then as soon as the sign off ended, the TV station blew up. 
<laughs> and they thought they were going to get in so much trouble and they weren't sure what was going to happen and all that stuff. And the next day, no one said a word. Nobody noticed. Nobody. Nobody <laughs> won't you. I, I got to say, here, here, here's funny. what I distinctly remember when I first lived in New York City. <clears throat> uh, NBC, for example, there was a bar called Hurley's right downstairs from the RCA building. And mm -hmm. what would happen is you have these booth announcers and all the booth announcers had to do was simply say, say on the half hour, um, WNBC New York, close the switch, mm -hmm. another half hour later, WNBC New York. That's all they would, that's all they would do. So they had nothing to do in between that. So they would go down to Hurley's and have a pop. <laughs> and they go back up on WNBC New York and then they go back downstairs have another pop I swear to you I loved hearing the guy who signed the station off at 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> he was so loaded WNBC <laughs> New York that's a good story. No, it's, it's true. Absolutely true. Uh, that might yeah. be what Dave was doing for the race. Now that I think about it, I think Dave was the booth announcer for that TV station. I think that's what his post was when he was there. Really? Yeah, he was a booth announcer there for a while. My old friend Chuck McCann used to like tell me stories about what went on over at Channel 11 here in New York because he worked there. And the one that I remember the most was that they had a, a show, some kid's show, where somebody was showing a beehive, okay? And then part of that show also was a police dog. <laughs> and in the middle of the show, the police dog knocks over the beehive. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and the bees went the only place bees would go. They went up to a vent and through a vent. <laughs> And the only place that vent went was into the announce booth. Oh, <laughs> and the guy was there waiting and waiting for the time for him to say, WPIX New York. <laughs> and all of a sudden he is attacked by like a thousand bees. <laughs> That's one of the funniest stories I've heard. There's one other funny story, but it takes too long to tell. We got time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Alice, okay. you're on a roll. Keep going. <laughs> Chuck McCann told me this one. There was a guy who had a show on Sunday, Saturdays. He would run a movie. And it was a, and what he was selling was a rotisserie cooker. And then what he would do on the show is he say, tonight's movie is blah, blah. blah and tonight we're going to make a lovely roast beef. And they put the skewer of the roast beef onto the you know, onto the uh, handles on the rotisserie and the thing would start going around, okay? And he would yep. cook it and cook it and cook it and, and they break in the movie and say, how's our roast beef go to it? Oh, the roast beef is doing terrific. And the thing was cooking away and cooking away and cooking away. Well, the, the guy, you know, after the show, he just, you know, left and went home without doing anything. They. They would unplug the uh, oh, the rotisserie. They unplug the refrigerator as well. <laughs> and uh, and the next week, he he comes back in, mm. and he thinks to himself, "Wow, I don't have any roast beef. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just use the roast beef from last week." <laughs> <laughs> so he starts making the roast beef from last week and coming back during the movie and the blah 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 and the, you know and. Oh, look how the lovely roast beef is. He can't tell. It's black and white television at the time. <laughs> you know, you can't tell if there are any flies chasing the spit, you know. And it was the roast beef from the week before. <laughs> so he then finishes off and he would always leave the station before the last break, after the last break, but before the last part of the movie. And he gets in his car and he starts to think to himself as he gets to the uh, Lincoln Tunnel, Jesus, you know, the crew 
tries to eat that food whenever <laughs> they can. <laughs> because that's, you know, it, 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 tech crews, camera <laughs> people, so on like that, are crazy about eating any food that's left behind. Yeah. Hey. He goes back to the TV station and there's an ambulance. Oh, oh no. 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 About five guys out of channels 11 <laughs> yelling and screaming out the name of the guy who was running the rotisserie. Because <laughs> <laughs> they had eaten the week old roast beef. Oh, oh, Didn't it smell bad? Jeez. Yeah. They didn't care. These are, these are stage hands. They'll eat anything. <laughs> floating around. They're not going on strike, are they? <laughs> uh, I don't have to worry about the picketing here. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Alex. How, How you are you doing? Okay. Yeah? Well, a little late. In the, I jumped oh. on because I heard you talking about kids not liking history, and it's a little late now. I don't want to digress. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'd like your take on it. No, I was going to tell you, my, my daughter is very interested in history, and we, we're around here all the time. i got to back up Marjorie. You're generalizing. You sound like an old fart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Marjorie on this one. In history, Thank so. you, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, Listen, I mean, there's kids around here that there's, I know of two kids in my daughter's class that are majoring in uh, history going into college. Really? Yeah, and okay. they're really less, interested. Less in there, well, I guess I, I guess I'm an old fart. I guess I'm an old fart. You and, you know, I and guess our I guess, kids I guess. here, our kids here have a special celebration for 9-11 every year. They have a 9-11 oh. day. Uh during oh. lunch, they go out there and the band plays the whole Star Spangled Banner and they hang a like a 50 foot, 300 foot flag across the school and the mm. whole bit. And they have memories and set up you know 343 okay, okay. flags and the whole I, bit I, I, they I do a lot of stuff but i think you know you're you're kind of right but i think it's just hidden as a little more than you think it yeah is. well i'm uh, probably because is, you're not in uh, touch with it the reason i look like an old fart is because i'm walking with a pronounced limp pronounced <laughs> by the way it, well, it, i know it, all about that part it's a pronounced <laughs> limp which is I, pronounced I, limp I, I live with that part <laughs> <laughs> That was one of my favorite jokes from the goon shows. He walked with a pronounced limp. Pronounced <laughs> limp. Pronounced <laughs> limp. <laughs> but no, there's it, a night. It well, is. Go ahead, Kevin. Wait a minute. Go what, are you gonna, what are you going to say? No, no, go ahead, Kevin. No, I was just saying the same thing that I said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I, I, guess I, I, guess I just wanted to back him up a little bit because it, it is existing. You just probably don't see it because. You don't have kids around and that yeah. sort of thing, but it, it, you know, it, I mean, as a matter of fact, my daughter took AP Euro and she studied mm. European history as well. And mm. that was bloody hell for her. And she still powered. Well, I agree. Through. I don't know what it's like to have kids because yeah. my, my sperm didn't get away. Bless your heart, Kevin. I have a son who's a history professor and I'm glad mm. to hear that it's not going to die. <laughs> I don't think so. They're going to have a lot to uh, look back on with this. What's going on right oh, yeah. now? So, you know, hey, listen. 30, 40, when I say when I now. say kids today, I'm I, I could include adults in that because I think that adults don't care. Well, that's true. I mean, you know, I mean that we, you know, bravo to your daughter for loving history, and bravo to any kid who loves history. But the fact of the matter is, they don't necessarily all love history. Well, it's you know? like I'm telling her, I'm constantly telling her, I said, pay attention to what's going on today because 50 years from now, you can say you lived it with yeah. the whole Absolutely. government thing that's going on. Yeah. Absolutely. In those days, 50 years from now, when you say, remember when there was a democracy in this country? Oh. <laughs> right. I used to do that with my mom, like, um, again, from from Canada, but still, like, do you remember when Kennedy died? And she just kind of looks at me and she goes, yeah. Um, and she, like, she went through every single little detail of that day. I can um, tell you where I was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah people can do the same thing. Tell you where we were. I was eating lunch in the first grade, or when that was a funeral, I guess. Yeah. You know, the only the only guy that I heard of that didn't know where he was when he when Kennedy was assassinated, didn't know where he was was Richard Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> you know where he was when when he was killed? 
Dallas. Dallas. He was in Dallas. He was in Dallas. 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 Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where's the cons conspiracy theory around that? <laughs> <laughs> he was in Dallas directing the operation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, strange world we live in. God. And uh, what's a blurry there? Oh, that's uh, oh, that's Pam, Pamela. Hello, Pamela that's and Jeff. Jessica. Hi, Pam. Hi, Hi Jeff. Jessica. Yeah. Over the car. <laughs> in the mail. He's so. getting out of the car. He's getting the mail. Oh, okay. I yeah. hope the car isn't moving. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been out of town. We were down in Man Country. We were down in Atlanta for a week. Oh, really? So. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got Mandy and you what went. Is, it's going south and yeah, I don't know. We went south in August. It was a little crazy, but we, get, we went to Atlanta. Man, we got Mandy and they got you. <laughs> they got us. Yeah. Right. And then we went to North Carolina. We went to my Jeff's cousin's lake for a uh, lake house for a couple of days. It was nice. Nice. Anyway, we got to go here. Hey, I know. So very, did I call you Pauline at the beginning, Paula? You did. Oh. So sure. I, think, I think I think when that happens, you should call Charlene Sharla. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then we should all take a shot. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Pauline, and thank you very much, Sharla. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much, Margie. <laughs> and thank you very much. Oh boy, what do I do with him? Whatever, whoever. <laughs> Bry. Uh, yeah, Mike Chisholm, thank you. What's oh, oh. Uh, that, that, you know, that makes me want to vomit. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Charlie Wallace. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, Lynn LaFrisco, always a wonderful thing to have you here. Edward Berger, thanks to you. That's thanks right. to Jeff and Pamela. Thanks to Kevin. Yeah, also, <laughs> thanks very much. Thanks very much to uh, 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 Mandy for being here in person. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank you uh, to Edward Berger, who will now sign us off by saying, That's all, folks. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.